Yeah. Well, um, did you have a good time losing it? Yeah. Okay, that's what matters. I've had a horse in my so. Oh, there you go. Uh, I think, yeah, I've been lost. I've been down to Hot Springs and did the horse. I don't like the horses. I'd rather, and I don't like computer gaming. I'd rather play real cards where it comes to like, uh, get cheated. There's algorithms in there to take my money. Um, I do a good job of losing that on my own. Uh, so, uh, Friday, uh, we covered 8.3. Uh, we finished 8.3, didn't get to 8.4, and I asked you to just kind of read that yourself. It was a, a page and a half, but I wanted to focus on 8.4 was vitamins as medicine. Uh, really, I'm going to ask you a question, just kind of see if you, um, if you read it or not. According to a report issued by the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, true or false, there is a lack of credible evidence uh, for or against using dietary supplements, including those with vitamins, to prevent major chronic diseases. That is, that is true. That's exactly what the book says. I read that word for word. So, yes. Uh, there is strong evidence to advise against the use of beta carotene supplements, especially among smokers. Um, the vitamin C and then smoking just has a, um, the body interacts differently with it. So be familiar with that. I have posted code um, uh, over chapter 8, which is vitamins. So we're going to use that. There are 30 questions. It is kind of a bigger one. Um, I've had one student ask me, because uh, I have three separate cahoots for this next celebration. So... Um, I, will, I had a student ask me if we could do one covering all three of them. Um, so I, I've got a couple of weeks to think about it. So if I'm going to do it, I need to, I'll let you know about that. Do you guys like the individual ones or one big one? I like the individual ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let me ponder about that a little bit. Um, and I'll get back with you. So we're going to move forward. Uh, chapter 9, we are, we're on good pace. Uh, I think we'll get through Chapter 9. It is still, it's a big chapter like vitamins were. were, were. Um, and then we have Chapter 12, which is food safety, um, which will go pretty quickly. But I think it's very important. Um, but let's get into Chapter 9 right quick. Uh, waters and mineral. Okay. Uh, we also we know that we can live longer without food than we can with water. Okay, uh, in late August 1997, a 19-year-old student who weighed 233 pounds attended a university in North Carolina. The young man was anxious to lose enough weight to qualify for the 195-pound weight class. That's 38 pounds. Okay. When the collegiate wrestler's season began later that semester, by November 6th, the wrestler lost 23 pounds, but the first tournament was to be held in two days, and he was still 15 pounds too heavy. To lose extra weight, he engaged in an intense, almost non-stop training session. Uh, basically, he ended up dehydrating himself okay, by wearing this combination of clothing, because he, he had the warm-ups. You see people, Rocky, I remember Rocky wearing the the hoodies, or you look at UFC fighters and people training for these kinds of things, um, you, you have to be aware of the kind of, of what your body's putting out and what you're taking in. So, so severe dehydration is a life-threatening condition that requires urgent medical care. I wrestled in high school. Um, I can kind of I never dehydrated myself, but there were a couple of techniques that we used that obviously nobody shared with this guy. Um, one, we <laughs> we would dip on our bus because we would spit out the saliva, right? So it would help us if we were a couple pounds from missing weight, we would do that on the way to our wrestling meets. Um, another one which sounds crazy, uh, if we were a couple pound, if we were a couple pounds off again, we would do a headstand for uh, uh, several seconds and then come in and stand on the scale and we would end up making weight. And how that worked, I have no idea. And then the other one is if the people weren't paying attention, we'd have our teammate pull up on the back of our trunks <laughs> to make weight. So there are a couple of ways to do this. This is not one of them, okay? We know that our body um, has a lot of water in it. In that 12-hour period, um, he restricted his water and food intake severely to, to, to make that extra weight. Uh, you just got to pay attention to your body. If you are craving water, if you are craving, if you have that natural 
thirst craving, you are already dehydrated. You're already dehydrated. Um, hyperthermia, very high. I don't have these highlighted, but they are in the books. But hyperthermia, uh, very high body temperature is likely to have contributed to his death because he wasn't his body wasn't able to cool it down because he, he was dehydrated. So that was the um, so dehydration started that and ex excelled into hyperthermia. Uh, the rapid weight loss practices that resulted in the death of the young wrestler were prohibited by the National Collegiate Athletic Association regulations. Um, so you can see the impact that they have on that. Uh, we often take water for granted, but this simple molecule is highly essential. We can survive weeks. And we can survive weeks, even months, if your diet lacks carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and vitamins. But if you do not have any water, your life will end within a week. Okay. Your body can make water, but it's very, very tough. It's, um, it's metabolic water. It's not, the, it's not the same, but it's very tough on the body. Uh, extra stress, so we definitely we know that stress has a big impact on our body, so we definitely don't want to do any more of that. So, uh, refresh my memory. We talked about vitamins. There are two groups. What are they? Okay, thank you. Water soluble. What's the other one? Fat soluble. Fat soluble. What are the? How many fat soluble vitamins are there? Four. Four. What are they? Okay. A, D, E, and K. Vitamins A, D, E, and K. Very good. Very good. Now we're going to talk about these minerals. There are two groups of these: the essential minerals. Okay. Uh, the body requires two particular micronutrients in milligrams or micrograms. I will not need you to know that for each of these, but know that there are essential minerals classified in two groups, major and trace. Okay, I will use minor to trip you up. Okay, Major, minor kind of makes sense, but it's major and trace. Those are the two groups. If we require 100 milligrams or more of a mineral per day, the mineral is classified as a major mineral. Okay, Otherwise, it's a trace mineral. No, make that connection, major and 100 milligrams or more. For major minerals. Okay, the body also contains very small amounts of other mineral, minerals such as nickel and arsenic. The essential nature of this particular group of minerals has not been fully determined, so we will refer to them as possible essential, kind of like choline, uh, vitamin-like. Okay, moving forward, so you see here major minerals, trace minerals. Uh, we're just going to talk about, a, uh, we're going to touch base on a few of these we're not, there's really no function, I mean, as far as this class goes, we are not going to learn all of those, okay? Um, mineral nutrients are key components of body structures and play vital roles in metabolism, water balance, muscle movement, and various physiological processes. Water. What do we know that it's made out of? Okay, yeah. H2O. Have you seen Water Boy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. H2O. High quality H2O. Here we go. Uh, two hydrogen and oxygen. Water does not need to be digested and it is easily absorbed by the intestinal tract. Okay. Uh, it's a simple compound composed of two hydrogens and one oxygen. Depending on a person's age, okay, know this, depending on a person's age, gender, and body composition, 50 to 70 pop. 5% of his or her body is water weight. Water weight. 50 to 75%. Unfortunately for you ladies, your bodies retain water in a specific time, um, at specific times. And that's, if I could give you an analogy of what, like a comparison, a gallon of milk weighs about 8 pounds. It's about 3, three liters. Okay, so when you talk about in nursing, uh, that was always my uh, three liters. I knew that was about eight pounds of water gain, loss, either way. When you look at inputs and outputs. Okay, a person's percentage of body weight that is water declines from birth to old age. Water is a major solvent that dissolves many substances, including glucose. Water often participates directly in chemical reactions such as those Porting, uh, involved in digesting water, transporting substances, removing products, lubricating tissues, regulating body temperature, and acid-base balance. That's all right here in this, um, this little paragraph.
a major component of body fluids such as blood, saliva, sweat, tears, mucus, and fluid in the joints. Okay, how does all this work? That's a, that's a good, I would definitely be familiar with some of those functions of water. You definitely be, you definitely be tested over those. So simple diffusion, everybody understand how that works? Okay, like think about it, uh, tea. Um, I use that often, we, we're, we're all pretty familiar with this. Okay, what happens is uh, the initial, like, like tea, it, it's evenly distributed. Okay, it's not when you take a drink of tea, one drink isn't more bitter or more sweet than the next one. That's, that's a simple diffusion, okay? The, the particles move and are highly concentrated to where they're less concentrated. So the initial, um, the initial contact here, and you can see as over time, it just in, periodically, um, the, the book even uses T as a description to kind of give you an idea of, of simple diffusion um, and how that works. Os selectively permeable membrane osmosis is a, uh, the, a barrier that allows a passage of certain substances. Osmosis is diffusion of solvent. Okay, it moves through the cell, that permeable membrane. Um, osmosis, so selectively permeable membrane, know that. Osmosis. Bodily fluids, the body has two major fluid compartments in the body, intracellular and extracellular. Okay, intracellular is inside the fluid, inside, I'm saying inside the fluid, in, in, intracellular is inside the cells, extracellular is outside, exit, outside, okay, make those combinations. About two-thirds of the body's water is intracellular fluid compartment, that's a lot. Uh, the body maintains the balance of compartmental fluids and add proper hydration. You're a soldier. You're out in the field this weekend. Do they provide you a lot of water when you're out there? Yes. They tell you to drink it. Do you have like a timer that every time it goes off you drink water? No. No. Mm -hmm. But they're pretty pretty strict on that, right? About yes, sir. Yep. 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 Maintenance of intracellular maintenance of intracellular volume depends to a large extent on the intracellular concentration of potassium and phosphates. So those potassium and phosphates, the book gives a good description right here um, of how that works. Uh, intracellular, you can see where the, the sodium and the chloride and some potassium are out here. Uh, and they, they will transfer through this cell membrane uh, through, through certain spots. Okay, what are those? Phospholipids. There you go, phospholipids, very good. Uh, so when we talk about how this works, um, Think about, uh, like, the, as far as the total intake, you got red blood cells have those positive ions. When we talk about a dilute, dilution solution, dilute solution or concentrated solution, what happens is, uh, in a dilute solution, these red, the, there's more inside than there is on the outside. Well, basically what happens is it, it diffuses that. It breaks down those membranes so that it, the concentrated solution is a high concentration of, of the sodium. So the sources of water, total water intake refers from first primarily to water ingested by consuming beverages and foods. Okay, I want you to know that one. Uh, but looking at this, I, I've, I've talked about this a couple times, lettuce and watermelon. Um, just iceberg lettuce, not romaine, but, but iceberg lettuce in particular is mainly water. Yep, good, good sources of... Um, a vitamin, well, not not necessarily lettuce, but definitely water. I mean, you can get some good sources of vitamins from that. The uh, adequate AI for total water intake is approximately 11 cups for young men and women, approximately 15 and a half cups. Where is that? 15 and a half cups for young men. I'll tell you right now, I probably drink half that in coffee, easy. But that's not water. It makes me. It's a dehydrate. Uh, um, it's a diuretic, so it makes me actually makes me create more urine. So I probably need to drink more water if half of my water comes from coffee. But look at that. I mean, uh, women. How many of you think drink eleven cups of water a day, or or intake? I mean, I say drink. I just mentioned if you if you eat watermelon, you're getting some fluid that way, right? Uh, but, but when we look at that and we talk about behavior changes. Think about how, how simple this would be. If I increase my water intake, what, what would would I feel fuller longer? Okay, would I be replacing uh, something that is unhealthy with water? 
you know, thinking about those things, how can I how can I get it there? What can I replace? Obviously, those could be some good changes for you. Um, but this is a good little good little graph of, of how much food or how much water is in different kinds of food. Um, fruit juice, milk, soup, soup, coffee, tea, soft drinks, and flavored bottled water or other sources of water. Most solid foods also contain some water. Fruits and vegetables appear to be solid, but they generally contain 60 to 95 percent water weight. Uh, so that, that's another good reason to eat more fruits and vegetables. About 80 percent of our total water intake is from water and other beverages. A considerable amount of water enters the digestive tract through secretions from the mouth, stomach, intestines, pancreas, and gallbladder. Uh, each day, about half. Each day, about half to almost a full cup. Let me find out where we're at. I'm trying to follow the number. Um, about 80%. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure you guys are following. There we go. So each day, about 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 of a cup of the water that enters the digestive tract is not absorbed. The body eventually eliminates unabsorbed water in our feces. Cells also form some water as a byproduct of metabolism. Metabolic water also contributes to the body's water intake and fluid balance. I do want you to remember that one. So how do we balance this out? Metabolic water, food, drink. So what we intake, what we output. Every time we open our mouth and breathe, water comes out. Sweat, insensible perspiration, armpits in our feet. When we go to the bathroom, okay, those are the outputs. How are we replacing those things? On average, healthy adult consumes approximately two and a half quarts of water daily. Uh, the body eliminates about two and a half quarts of water in urine, exhale, uh, air, feces, and perspiration. Thus, a healthy person's average water uh, equal intakes equal should equal the daily losses. If we know that we're not drinking. 11 cups or 15 and a half cups, we're probably not getting what we need from our food. Various factors influence a person's water intake and output. Environmental factors such as temperature, humidity, altitude can affect body water losses. Uh, do you think people in, closer to the equator sweat more than people in Antarctica? Yep. However, can being in the cold cause you to be dehydrated? Even though you're not sweating, think about the shivers. You're, all your muscles are working to create body heat. It's using water. Absolutely, you can get dehydrated being up in the... Uh, how many of you have ever eaten, like, you're out there in the snow, and you're, like, excited, and you start eating it just because you're... You just tend to eat more snow because you don't... It's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's, it's a, Your body's too hot for that, that drastic change. Um, but various influences... Pers uh, it various influence a person's water intake and output, environmental factors, physiological conditions, especially fever, vomiting, diarrhea, as well as lifestyle, including exercise habits, alcohol intakes. Well, that one shows up quite a bit. We know that alcohol uh, interferes with our, our vitamin intake, right? We talked about that, those water-soluble vitamins. Perspiration is a body water that is secreted by sweat glands. When perspiration reaches the skin surface, it evaporates into air. This body also helps cool the body down and maintains its normal temperature. Okay? So let's get into something a little bit more scientific. And I, I find the kidneys very interesting. Yes, they help uh, filter out our, our urine and blood. Um, but it, it, we can't live without them. Okay, or the dialysis would not be a thing. The kidneys are a major regulator of body's water content and ion concentrations. A healthy person, the kidneys maintain proper hydration by filtering excess ions and water from blood as it flows through the kidney's tissue. Water is the main component of urine. Okay, um, if you drink more watery fluids than your body needs, your kidneys excrete the excess water in urine. Um, I know we've talked about looking at our feces and determining how our body, what we're eating and how our body's processing that. We're going to also look at urine. Uh, what, what would a, a bright yellow urine typically consider? 
What would that say about your body? Oh, could be. Could be dehydration. Sometimes darker urine will, will um, signify that, that there is some dehydration, but a bright one um, usually means your body's getting rid of excess vitamins. Okay? Uh, when it's clear, you obviously, most of that is fluid. Most of that just is water excretion. Kidneys also remove drugs and metabolic waste products, um, such as urea from the bloodstream. Sometimes minerals and waste products settle out of the urine and collect into crystals. These crystals can form large mass uh, kidney stones. That's what that guy looks like. Have many of you ever had a kidney stone before? No. You have a question, Abby? Um, the color of your pee, does it change when you're pregnant? Or is that like just a... Never been pregnant, so I don't know. Hand. But I did have, I did okay. have to. I'm See, sorry. <laughs> when I, I didn't have symptoms, I just kind of tested, and when I found out I was pregnant, I like thought back, and the color was different. But my cousin told me that that wasn't a thing. But a lot of people that I've talked to or looked it up said it is a thing. So I just didn't know if you knew. Um, I do have two boys, so I you think I would. I don't think that was a question that I asked my wife at those times. That that what colors your urine when you tested that. Uh, but I can imagine it would. I mean, new feces, new embryo, new blood tissues. You know, I, mean, I would imagine that. You, and, you know, if you're not if you're not feeling well, or or um, you're not getting enough for you and the new the new embryo, the new fetus, uh, your body's going to pull from your research. I can imagine it would change the color for sure. I would be surprised if it didn't. So sure, good question. Uh, kidney stones often contain the mineral calcium. Uh, kidney stones uh, moves out of the kidney and enters the tube leading to the bladder, and that's usually where it gets stuck and they have to lithoblast it. Uh, dehydration increases the likelihood of forming kidney stones. So if you work out a lot and you're not drinking enough water, you might want to resuggest that. Just talked about this. What's a diuretic? Caffeine is a diuretic. Okay, we find caffeine in tea, coffee. How many of you knew caffeine was in cocoa? Small amounts, but it's there. Small amounts, but it's there. A substance that increases urine production. So if I'm trying to increase my water intake, but I drink eight cups of coffee a day, I should probably drink a lot more water, right? Or eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Um, I did a fair share. Coffee, tea, energy drinks, soft drinks often contain caffeine or caffeine related compounds, however the water consumed in caffeinated beverage is not completely lost in urine. So drinking these fluids may still contribute to meeting your water needs. Uh, water cons conser conservation, I mentioned, uh, as mentioned in the, I don't know if I talked about, oh yeah we did. Body water, body water depletion is called dehydration. Okay, dehydration can be a life threatening condition when you're hot perspiring heavily, your kidneys try to conserve as much water as possible to avoid that. So antidiuretic uh, anti hormone, ADH, or, and aldosterone are two hormones that participate in the body's effort. I don't, I have them highlighted, so I would make that connection, ADH and aldosterone, um, to maintain the fluid balance. Those are the connections to those two, work, to those two terms. <coughs> Um, I used to do, I did a, how many of you know someone that's a lineman? I'm not, not in football, or, uh, but um, electricity works out in the field. Uh, in West Plains, I, every year I would go in and talk to the linemen uh, about the foods that they could snack on during the summertime because out in the heat they're exposed. I mean, they're up on a pole or they're working on um, electrical, so they have a lot of heat strokes. Uh, those those type of people that work even even um, Arkansas or Department of Highway Transportation, uh, I'm sure that they probably go through some kind of just an education course before summer rolls around. Talk about uh, replacing those fluids that they're going to lose, even especially staying out there on the asphalt. I mean that'll that'll definitely deplete your fluid your fluid balances in, in that manner. Antidiuretic hormone stimulates the kidneys to conserve water, ADH, aldosterone, signals the kidneys to reduce the, uh, the, to reduce the elimination of sodium in urine. As a result, the kidneys return the mineral and water to the general circulation. In addition to urine volume, 
The color of urine may be a useful indicator of hydration status. The book goes into some light yellow, straw colored urine can indicate adequate hydration. Okay, a dark colored urine may be a sign of dehydration. Okay, uh, it is important to recognize that having urinary tract infections or infectious cer ingesting certain medications, foods, and dietary supplements, especially those containing B vitamin riboflavin, can alter urine's color. Um, how many of you eat asparagus? How many of you ever noticed like how soon it takes for even the smell and the color to change after you eat asparagus? Yeah, it makes your pee stink. <laughs> yeah, it does. I mean, yes, it does. Um, and almost immediately. Like it doesn't take, it's just one of those things. So, I mean, that doesn't, obviously doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you, but we know that for eating asparagus, that we, those things impact um, our urine. And alcohol is also a diuretic. Normally, uh, antidiuretic hormone uh, signals the kidneys to conserve water. However, alcohol inhibits ADH secretion from the pituitary gland in the brain, enabling the kidneys to eliminate more urine than normal. Alcohol contributes to dehydration. Uh, when you are hungover the next morning from drinking too much, it's because you're dehydrated. Because you're dehydrated. You ever had that you drink too much the night before, and the first thing you do is drink a glass of water, and then you feel like you're right back at where you were last night? Uh, or you wake up in the middle of the night, it's such a dry, dry mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're dehydrated. Uh, dehydration, despite the body's mechanisms to balance water content, uh, it's, it's fluid is constantly being lost. Primarily through skin and lungs. Rapid weight loss is a sign of dehydration. Remember we talked about the skin turger where you can pull the back of your skin on your hand and kind of check uh, your status of, of hydration. Uh, three pounds after exercising in hot conditions, you have lost 2% of your broader weight, primarily as water. Uh, if you, the book says if you weigh 150 pounds uh, and, and you drop three pounds after exercising, I don't think that's ever happened to me. I'd be scared that I'm messed in my pants or something if I lost three three pounds after exercising in hot conditions. I mean, I've done that. I mean, we did two days in high school in July. That was hot. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea. As the loss of body water approaches 4%, muscle loss considerable amounts of strength and endurance. Muscles lose considerable amounts of strength and endurance by the time body weight is reduced by 7 to 10 percent as a result of body fluid loss, severe weakness at 20 percent of reduction body weight, coma and death. Doesn't sound like a whole lot, 20 percent. I can imagine even getting to that point. That's just, um, it just goes to show why it's so important to, to monitor your fluid intake. Um, Here's something. Thirst it is the primary regulator of fluid intake. Okay. The thirst response alerts you to, to the need to replenish water that was lost by sweating or other means. Thirst stimulates people to drink fluids before severe dehydration occurs. Thirst is accurately as, um, however, people who are dehydrated and older than 60 years of age do not sense thirst as accurately as younger adults. Great. That's what I've got to look forward to. Uh, they become less able to conserve water when fluid intakes are low. Uh, people who are at risk, people who are at risk, especially children with fever, vomiting, diarrhea, and increased persper perspiration may need to be given some special solutions. Athletes and other people who work out outdoors, especially in hot conditions, need to stay properly hydrated. Uh, that's why we talk about vomiting, even fever and diarrhea. Uh, I mean, when you're vomiting and diarrhea, those are water-based um, exits, I guess you could say, from the body. So we have to replace the, especially with women that are pregnant. Uh, we talk about water intake all the time because they just, um, especially the first first several weeks. Can too much water be toxic? I think we've already talked about that. Okay. Um, but there, there's no upper level, but water intoxication, however, can occur when excessive amount of water is consumed in a short period of time, or the kidneys have difficulty filtering water from the blood. Um, 
And those would be uh, people that would be on um, dialysis. There are two forms of dialysis. Uh, peritoneal, uh, which is through the stomach. They can use the stomach wall, the stomach cell wall as a filter to, pull, to help pull excess water off of the body. Um, I have a question. Yes, sir. So, say two people are working out. Would the person who sweats more or less be considered more dehydrated? Well, we discussed that age and gender could impact um, our, our body. So I, I think it's a valid question. Um, I think it goes back to how much were you drinking, how much fluids are you drinking outside that period? So if I'm, a, so you're talking about those that sweat more than the other person? Mm. I, I mean, because I wouldn't like so. The body sweats to maintain the temperature, right? Mm -hmm. So, isn't that so? That's what the water is doing, though, right? Right, right. So that's why. So I, yeah, I don't. Um, I would. I mean, if they're sweating more, I would think that they would need more water. More water. But then I think it goes back to to, to genetics too. We've talked about that being a uh, and having an impact on on how our bodies work. I mean, if I'm if I'm genetically not a sweater. Then do I, I swear, do I, anyway, um, if, I, if I don't sweat more, do I need more water? See, that's why I didn't know. I didn't know if the body was, so like if the body's saying it has too much water so it's getting rid of it, or, or enough, not too much, or if it's trying harder because it doesn't have enough water to cool down. You know, I, I think it's a valid question. Um, I, I think you could. I think you could see it two ways, mate. You know, I, I guess you got two people working out in the gym. I think it would be to be able to assess that a little bit better and find out. I think you'd have to look at all the angles. What did they do outside the gym? You know, what were they doing before they came in? Were they uh, or the night before? Were they were they out drinking and partying, or and then coming in and, and working out the next day? Or uh, I think there's a lot of different scenarios, but I, I think you you have to look at the genetics. Maybe he's not working out as hard as the guy next to him. Maybe he's just in there to, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. If you're not in there to work out, I don't know what you're not in there to do. But you know what I mean? I, I think there's other factors to, to, to be able defin to, to definitively say there's something wrong with that guy or there's, I think it's just, I think it goes back to each individual, how hard are they working, what are, what, what are their activities or or consumptions outside the gym, I think that would give us a better picture of it. Wouldn't surprise me. I, I don't know that it was. It's their bodies working harder than the other one. I know that doesn't really answer your question, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an answer for you, Adrian. Sorry, buddy. Um, let's dive into 9.3. This isn't a. This is a small section. I think we can get through this. Um, Wrote it pretty easily. So minerals, basic concepts. Minerals such as ion, iron, minerals such as iron and calcium, are a group of elements of earth's rocks, soils, and natural water sources. Plants, animals, and other living things cannot synthesize minerals. Plants obtain the minerals they need from the soil or the fertilizer. Okay? Animals generally obtain minerals when they consume plants and other animals or substances that contain these elements. About 15 elements are, have known functions in the body and are necessary for human health. Several minerals including lead and mercury are often found in the human body but they are environmentally contaminants that have no known functions. Uh, lead poisoning happens. We, uh, in WIC, we, lead often happens in water sources so we can monitor those. Uh, mercury, how many of you remember the thermometers that had mercury in them? We had no idea how dangerous those were. Okay, mercury is stored in the brain, uh, which is another reason why we tell moms uh, to stay away from the wild caught uh, ocean fish because that mercury can be stored inside the brain and the fetus and cause some developmental delays later on um, and after birth. About 15, 15 minerals. Uh, so, so iron, calcium, lead, mercury, unlike vitamins, minerals are indestructible. These are the superheroes. Except superheroes have weaknesses, but they do not. Vitamin, minerals do not have weaknesses. 
Because minerals cannot be destroyed, heating of food or exposing it to most other environmental conditions will not affect the food's mineral content. Now when we think about mineral content, uh, we've talked about liver. Okay, you know how it has that metallic taste to it? That would be iron. Okay, uh, That would most likely be contributed by iron. Red meat's the same way, which I think is when younger children, um, they, they go through food lags, but they... they they tend to gravitate away from red meats, uh, and I think that contribute our taste buds change. We lose taste buds as we get older, and I think at that age, that between two and six, uh, one, they're already picky eaters, but two, trying to get them to eat red meat, I, I think it just tastes different. I think it's metallic. I think it has a metallic flavor, um, which is why they don't like it, or they drown it in ketchup or ranch. Um, however, minerals are water soluble. They can leach out of food and into cooking water. Uh, by using cooking water to make soups or sauces, uh, we want to use that broth, uh, not not get rid of it. So um, remember that if you're if you're a soup, if you like soups and making those at home. Essential minerals have diverse roles in the body. Some minerals are from, form inorganic structural components of tissue, such as calcium and phosphorus in bones and teeth. Okay, minerals also function as inorganic ions, substances that have negative or positive charges. Uh, if we look at this, uh, cofactors, we've talked about uh, coenzymes, a cofactor, phosphate ions participate in acid balance base. Uh, a cofactor is a metallic ion or small molecule that activates certain chemical reactions. Okay, please know that. This kind of gives you an idea of each mineral's role. Again, for the purpose of this class, I don't think it's necessary that we memorize all this. Okay, uh, But certain minerals are involved in chemical reactions that release energy from macronutrients. Wow. Wait, Russ does vitamin shakes. What about mineral shakes? Has anybody ever heard of those? Me neither. But, do those things give you energy? Do vitamins give you energy? Yes. No. <laughs> no, they do not. But they allow those processes, they allow those chemicals of reaction to happen more often. So it seems like you're, you're getting a boost of energy when you drink those things. Minerals could probably do the same thing. Knowing that minerals are involved in chemical reactions that release energy from macronutrients. Okay. Uh, in some instances, the digestive tract absorbs more minerals than the body needs, but the but the excess is excreted primarily in urine or feces. Um, the body stores extra minerals in the liver, bones, and other tissues. Toxic signs and symptoms occur when minerals accumulate in the body to such an extent that they interfere with the functioning of the cells. Therefore, people should choose their diets carefully so their bodies can maintain an adequate supply of minerals. Sources of minerals, but does a good job kind of milk is one of those. Um, does a pretty good job, grains. A lot of these are fortified or enriched, okay? <laughs> um, vegetables, proteins. As a major factor in the body's need for the, uh, the body's ability to absorb and use minerals, bioavailability, uh, depends on many factors. A major factor in the body's need for the mineral. Uh, in general, requirements increase during periods of growth, such as infancy, puberty, infancy, puberty, uh, and pregnancy and breastfeeding. Compared to plant foods, animal foods tend to be more reliable sources of minerals such as iron and calcium. Other sources of minerals, uh, tap water in your community. Uh, here in Arkansas, how many of you know the water is fluorinated? Most of, most of them in Arkansas that I'm familiar with. Missouri, our, the town that I came from did not. Several communities in the area did not fluorinate the water. Um, it is it is a good way to add it. It is good for tooth health, okay, but there is a toxic level, um, which is why they put it, did you know it's in our toothpaste? Fluoride? But it's not in children's toothpaste. Because if they consume too much of it, it becomes toxic pretty quickly. But then they put it in our water. And then we want our children to drink water instead of juice and sodas, right? Got to be careful. 
obviously it's not in amounts that are going to get us sick, but um, it, it's in it's in the water. It's good for tooth health, but there can be um, there can be a toxicity level. What for, happened? Oh, I'm sorry. Good. What happens if you do get too much fluoride? Um, let's find out. So strength and bones, teeth, we consume inadequate amounts. Hard water naturally contains a variety of minerals, calcium, that's what we had up there. I, uh, a hot water heater wasn't very old. Calcium buildup on the exit exit um, of the hot water heater and it just busted. Water pressure busted all over. 50 gallons of water in the floor. Happens. Uh, that's hard water though. Um, water with high mineral content often tastes and smells unpleasant. Uh, people drink bottled water as a substitute. We're, we've talked about that a little bit already. Um, with, with the toxic level as far as, as fluoride, um, we'll, we will discuss that, but not, not just yet. Okay, I want, to, I want to say that, but we will go over some toxicities of some of these things. Many, many mineral, uh, let me back up, fluoride is often added to water supplies. Uh, bottled water is a substitute for tap water. Dietary supplements are another source of mineral. Uh, many minerals have narrow range of safe intake, therefore it is easy to consume a toxic amount, especially taking supplements that contain only a particular mineral. We've talked about the same thing with vitamins. Additionally, an excess of one mineral can interfere with the absorption or metabolism of other minerals. And that's, um, I think that's where we will, we will stop at 9.4 and pick up there on Wednesday. Uh, if I, I will look ahead for you, Adrian. I know we talk about, we talk about if, I, if we don't go across that, then I will, I will share that with you. I, I think it's a valid question. I mean, if it's, if it's in our toothpaste and it's in our water, then what's the upper limit for fluoride? And how much do we need to drink? Uh, Kahoot, I told you Kahoot's been posted. Outside of that, I don't have anything else for you guys. Uh, have a good rest of your